Hey guys, Devin here. Welcome to another little update on our ultimate South African road trip. Right now, I'm standing on the Mtomo Aerial Boardwalk, and that's on the western shore section of the Isamangi Maso Wetland Park. And that in the distance behind me is Lake St. Lucia. Before we left on this trip, if you'd asked me how long I thought we'd be spending in St. Lucia and this southern section of the Isamangiliso Wetland Park, I probably would have said two to three days, maybe four maximum. There's absolutely no way I would have anticipated us spending two weeks here and having every day filled back to back with excursions, activities, hikes, you name it, and then still leave the park feeling like there was so much more we could have done. Uh, but that's exactly what's happened. We met up with a guy by the name of Grant Christie. Grant, uh, a couple of years ago, he walked the coast of South Africa from uh, Alexander Bay right round to Cozy, which is just up north from here. So we've been hanging out with him, uh, doing a couple of excursions. We got things started off with a kayak safari with the guys from St. Lucia Kayak Safari. And that included an absolutely amazing Zambezi shark encounter. What the heck? <laughs> um, I don't think I ever want to get that close to a shark like that again, <laughs> but from the safety of the kayaks it was actually quite an incredible experience. Okay, so we've just been told that there's the largest number and density of hippos in South Africa in the estuary section of the Samangalisa Wetland Park. and. This is mating season. So, <laughs> yeah. So, challenge accepted, I think. These are our weapons. This is what we have to fend off Mustang bulls. Raunchy, raging, sexually charged Mithippo males. And I got this. <laughs> Let's do it. Later that day, we decided to take things just maybe a little less extreme uh, and we joined a mountain bike cycle tour of St. Lucia and that was with the guys from Shaka Baka. Um, that was a really cool trip actually because you got to see a couple of the trails that you drive past every day and you got to get access to certain parts of the reserve that uh, you don't normally uh, and with the guide who was with us, he was incredibly knowledgeable not only of the area but of the fauna and flora and uh, bit of history and cultural sort of aspects that there's just no ways I could have known that so it was really awesome to be traveling with him uh, and just a, a beautiful way to experience the, the town and the surrounds. While we've been out here the weather hasn't really been amazing uh, in fact it's been quite rainy but hey in the middle of the drought who's gonna complain about rain so We've still made the most of things. Uh, we went out on a whale watching safari uh, with the guys from Advantage Tours. And while the rain did come down, the whales were out in full force. We saw some big breaches, a lot of tail slaps, uh, a lot of activity out there. It was absolutely incredible. Um, so yeah, big thanks to the guys there for that experience. It was, it was unbelievable. And then yeah, our last sort of excursion um, was with Rick from Safari and Surf and he took us just up the way here uh, to Cape Vidal and he took us out on a snorkeling safari, showed us a little bit uh, of the, the local fish that are in that region at this time of year and uh, sort of explained a little bit about the Dorothea wreck which is kind of this treasure hunter's fable in the region. So yeah, absolutely awesome time there with him as well. We also got away on our own for a little bit. Um, we did a hike up to Bats Cave, which is near Mission Rocks in the eastern shore section of the Isamangisa Wetland Park. And yeah, that was a great evening out. Probably about a two hour hike. Um, did it at low tide, obviously, just uh, for access sake. Um, and then yeah, the lighting out there, just being out on the beach, it's just such an amazing place. You, you just can't get over it, to be honest. 
Um, and yeah, we've obviously spent a whole lot of time in both the eastern and western shores section of this reserve. Uh, and one thing I kind of have to remind myself every single time we're out here is that not too long ago, all of this was just plantations. It was just acres and acres and acres of trees. Um, and ever since Isimangaliso has kind of stepped in, uh, that's all been removed, cut away. The land has been repurposed for uh, wildlife and tourism. And basically what we're witnessing is the rewilding process taking place. So that's something extra special. So yeah, if you want to come and see um, kind of nature kicking back and uh, taking its own back, then it's all happening here in Isimangaliso. And then as for the next part of our trip, we're obviously heading inland now. We're going to Kukui and Falozi for a couple of days. But this isn't the last time we come into the Isimangaliso wetland park. We'll be back here again in a couple of days time, uh, but obviously further north, um, explore a couple of the northern regions of the lake and then beyond towards the border. So we're going to sort of say goodbye for now, um, but we'll be back again. So hope you guys are all keeping well and we'll see you on the road. So and I have just come down to the public jetty. We've come driven down towards probably about five meters from the water's edge just to see if we can see some crocs and hippos. We found a gigantic crocodile yeah. chilling right here on the slipway. <laughs> 